proceder, siempre adelante, nunca retroceder. Vamos, los cerras, vamos a promover las vocaciones que el mundo va a tener, las vocaciones que el mundo va a tener. Promoveremos la vida sacerdotal, la religiosa y también la laical. Las oraciones nos acompañarán, en el trabajo fuerzas nos darán. Siempre adelante, nunca retroceder, siempre adelante, nunca retroceder. Vamos, los cerras, vamos a promover las vocaciones que el mundo va a tener, las vocaciones que el mundo va a tener. Ante el llamado yo acudiré, todas mis fuerzas en él yo pondré, y con la gracia que Dios nos echará, fruto abundante de santidad. Siempre adelante, nunca retroceder, siempre adelante, nunca retroceder. Vamos, los cerras, vamos a promover las vocaciones que el mundo va a tener, las vocaciones que el mundo va a tener. Good morning, Cerns. Good morning, my friends. My name is Alec Duncan. I am a past president of Cern International and currently 
Vice President for Communication for the Serra Great Britain Council. Firstly, Ella and I are quite saddened that we cannot be with you. We miss the physical contact with my fellow past presidents and indeed the many CERNs friends that we have made over the years. I am also a trustee on our CERN International Foundation and I am sorry that I am not with you to support the great work they do on your behalf. The iconic image that you are seeing of the glistening, wet, dark St Peter's Square with the Holy Father alone praying upon a platform. What you are seeing encapsulates the suffering and indeed the challenges for our church during this pandemic. Our bishops and priests and those dedicated to shepherding our people have been put under great pressures simply to, to provide the basic essentials of our faith. Many have been isolated and frustrated, young ones supporting older ones, frustrated that they cannot fulfil their vocation and the, and the call of our Lord to provide the Eucharist and the sacraments. Sarah throughout the world has equally suffered. We have not been able to function fully in our basic work to go out and encourage and attract vocations and meet with our club members to pray for vacations. Over the last 18 months of lockdown and restrictions, our Sarah clubs in Great Britain have met by Zoom or WhatsApp or simply by email communication. Some of our more senior CERNs are not quite able to use the internet and in one case a CERN of some 50 plus years of service who can't wait to return to our normal meetings has communicated by email weekly with what he calls his chatter. Chatters are his stories related to his CERN vacations experiences. His most recent chatter being number 74, representing 74 weekly communications with his club members, one year and a half of devotion to our cause. And of course, we have lost members to this virus, including one of our priests to serve Great Britain, namely Archbishop Philip Tatalia. Both he and Bishop Vincent Logan, who died three days later, were great ambassadors for Sarah. Several other members we have also lost. Keep them in our prayers. May they rest in peace. Despite all the restrictions, our diocese, by the grace of God, have a new entries to seminary for the proper due year. Ordination to the diaconate and the priesthood are still forthcoming. All is not doom and gloom. If we pray enough, our Lord will listen. Communication has been extremely important in this past year and a half and will continue to be so. We have our website. We have our Sarah GB Focus newsletter. It is now more of a magazine. It has expanded both in content and distribution to our national CERNs and beyond. Clergy, religious orders and friends of Sarah know that we still exist and with the possibility of new members when we return to normal. Notably, when the focus is issued bi-monthly, the number of fits over the first few days of issue rises dramatically. We currently have an average of four to five fits per day, but spiking at the beginning of the month of issue. And again, notably, our resources page being the most popular, where rosary for vacations, intercessions, or other prayer sessions can be freely downloaded for use by our CERNs, our churches, and has been very active over the lockdown periods. It is only in the last month that Sarah Clubs in Great Britain have been able to meet physically to celebrate the Eucharist together and to return to some kind of norm normality. This Sunday coming, our National Council and members meet for our AGM, the intention to re-establish our many external programmes where we have visited schools, our parish adoration for vacations, our vigils, our parish 31 clubs. They will all require renewing and many more programmes. Most importantly, our membership, which is predominantly older, has suffered through inactivity. One club has expanded, others have retained their numbers, and regrettably, some members have fallen away through inactivity and old age. This coming Sunday, we'll strategise where we want to be in the coming years and our plans to once again expand our membership. Let us pray that Sarah in Great Britain and beyond, with the help of prayer, will succeed in the very valuable work for our church in attracting and encouraging vocations and supporting those very valuable priests and religious who have dedicated themselves to the service of God's people.
hopefully and prayerfully, we will not have to endure or experience for much longer this dreaded virus and the restrictions it imposes on our church, clergy and consecrated religious. On Sarah here in Sarah in Great Britain and throughout our Sarah world, remember that prayer moves the heart of God. Thank you for this opportunity to share. God willing, we will be with you in Toronto next year. The Sarah Club of Bangalore, India, presented by Sayers de Lima, youth member Sarah Bangalore. Sarah Bangalore was chartered in the year 2003. Our sponsoring Sarins were Dr. China Rong from Thailand and Mr. Neo Mendez from Bangladesh. Sue Chihersky, who was the Sarah International President that year, came to India to hand over the charter document to us. We now present to you Sarah Bangalore under three headings. What we missed doing during the pandemic year, what we actually did do during the pandemic year, and our vision for post-pandemic times. Under part one, we show you some of the successful activities that we missed. Our annual scripture quiz for students of the 8th, 9th and 10th grades was held every year since 2005. An average number of 125 students competed for rolling trophies. Next, our presentations at Catholic schools. Serens would do a brief introduction about Sera, show the students our multimedia audiovisual entitled Leave Your Boats and Follow Me. We would then have a young priest or religious sister share their vocation story with them, ending with an interactive session and closing prayer. We have received good feedback that some who attended these presentations did in fact join the diocesan seminary or a religious order. Since our ex-president was a member of the Archdiocese Vocation Commission, the Serens were invited to assist on the Archdiocese altar servers programs. We went all out to help. We had a one mass a month program. In this program, Serens would visit different churches for the Sunday parish mass and request the parishioners to participate and offer one mass a month for vocations in their parish. We enrolled them into a 1M club. Once a year, we showed our appreciation to women religious by planning a mass, followed by fellowship with games, gifts and a meal with the Serens. The sisters loved it and looked forward to it every year. Another annual feature was our Christmas time visit to the unwell, old and retired priests, taking for them Christmas goodies and gifts. We would spend time with them, chatting, singing and playing games, all to show our appreciation and to thank them for dedicating their lives in the service of the church. We now share what we did during the pandemic. After sitting back for a few months, waiting for the end of the pandemic, realization dawned on us that this enemy had come to stay. It was time for us to rise to the occasion. Being only action people was not enough. We needed to turn to the Lord in prayer. We began by meeting virtually once a month, beginning each meeting with an intercessory rosary. On learning that we had lost over 400 priests in India during the pandemic, four Serens decided to join together online and pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day at 3 p.m. With the help of the Bangalore Archdiocese, a meditative adoration in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament was held online. Several online spiritual talks were arranged, which we opened up to Serens, their families and their friends. During Lent, we prayed the Stations of the Cross together online. For our women religious friends, we created a special Stations of the Cross, focusing on them. Since it was online, we were able to invite congregations from across the country. We switched to charitable works during the pandemic. The economic situation in India was on a continued downtrend with no recovery in sight. 
many lost their jobs and could barely provide for their families. With donations from Serens and their friends in Bangalore and Salem, around a thousand plus families were being provided with basic groceries. Cooked food was also distributed to the hungry. We now come to part three, which puts forward our vision for post-pandemic times. Serens in Bangalore are looking forward to post-pandemic times when we can meet physically and be more effective. We plan to renew our visits to schools and parishes and, con and to conducting our annual Bible quiz. We hope to restart our visits to clergy homes and our involvement with the Archdiocese altar servers programs. The next two slides will show you how we are gearing up for the new trend. Since the new trend in communication is more visuals and social media, we are in the process of putting together short vocation video clips to share with our youth. We hope to emphasize on all our members the need to make an all-out effort to bring in new members and to increase visibility of SERA in other cities by corresponding with vocation directors in the hope of establishing more SERA clubs in India. In the next two slides, we present the Serens of Bangalore and Salem. The pandemic appears to have brought on a silent lethargy on us, with a number of Serens dropping out of active participation. Post-pandemic, with God's grace and the intercession of our patron, St. Junipero Serra, we hope to rejuvenate all existing members and work seriously on bringing in new members. Thank you. Out of 66 billion population, there is less than 1% of Catholics in Thailand. More than 90% are Buddhists. Sera Thailand Council consists of three districts and 27 clubs. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, our members have been working tirelessly to achieve Sera's main objective, promoting vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. I would like to share with you here two of our many activities. First, the piggy banks for vocation. Lux Mundi is the only one major seminary in Thailand, which will celebrate the 50th anniversary of its establishment next year. As a gesture of strong support for the seminarians, we have been campaigning for the seminary among several members all over the country to fully aware of the importance of the seminary as the source of fostering priestly vocation. Members have been saving their money little by little on a daily basis, knowing that the money will gradually increase. Above all, every time we put our cash in the piggy bank, we realize our supportive bonds with the seminarians we are praying daily for them. Second, the power of prayer. Each Sera club has the name list of their diocesan priests and seminarians who will be assigned to each member at random. Each Sera prays daily for his or her buddies. One member may have more than one name for praying. Both activities allow us to support the seminary financially and the priests and seminarians with our regular prayers. Both activities are ongoing, even amid the pandemic. Apart from the vocational activities, our Sera Thailand Council has introduced a new way of meeting from face-to-face -to, -face to online Zoom conference since June 2020. For the annual convention, Sera Thailand Council invited one of our priests to share his experience. He was studying the sacred church music composition in Rome. He talked via Zoom about his study and his life amid the COVID-19 pandemic in Italy. After the annual convention, we host online conferences monthly, mainly on the preparation of Sera International Convention in Thailand in 2023. On this occasion, all of us in Thailand would like to cordially invite you, fellow Seras and friends, to the 80th Sera International Convention in Chiang Mai, north of Thailand. 
which will take place in June 2023. Come and see how Sarah in this part of the world living our faith among non-Christian neighbors. We are more than ready to give you a warm welcome with Thai hospitality and looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you and สวัสดีครับ Hi, my name is Richard Arians. I'm the president of the U.S. Council of Sara r International. I want to thank the Sara r International Board for this opportunity to, to speak to Sarans around the world and to share what Sarans are doing here in the United States. This global pandemic has certainly touched all of us. Many of our clubs have had to discontinue meeting and have had to cancel many of their traditional vocation support events. Catholics and non-Catholics alike have been severely restricted from attending worship services, attending live masses, and receiving the sacraments, except to watch it on our TVs and computers from our homes. As with our international conventions, our annual U.S. s e r a Rally was canceled, and all of our regional conventions could not go on as planned. And as expected, our membership numbers have declined. But in spite of all this upheaval, there has been much good, much excitement that has been generated in the name of the Sarah Mission. Here are a few things. First, the U.S. Council Board will have met four times in 2021. One time was 100% virtual. The other three times were a combination of in-person and online attendance. During the pandemic, we were able to meet in Kansas City, Dallas, Minneapolis, and soon we will be meeting in Chicago. During that time, we have learned how to master our newfound technology tools. My dear Sarans, I am proud to announce that due to the dedication of the board and the support of all the U.S. Sarans, we never shut down from pursuing our mission of vocations. The pandemic also inspired a new program called Sarah Meets, Sarah Now More Than Ever. This is a one-hour online meeting built on a webinar platform. The meeting is conducted each month and features an opening and closing prayer, a high-profile speaker followed by Sarah Business. Many of our speakers that we have had in the past are featured on this slide. We especially encourage those clubs that have had to stop meeting to stay connected by attending this monthly meeting. Although this program was originally planned to run for about six months, but due to its popularity, it will now go, it will now go on till further notice. Greg Schweitz, who's our past U.S. Council President and a member of the SI Board, has worked tirelessly in heading up this event and securing our speakers. Another national program, a very popular one, is our Seven Saren Prayer Initiative, which continues stronger and more popular than ever. This is a program that assures each and every diocesan vocation director is prayed for each and every day of the year. Past President Judy, Judy Cousins founded the program and administers it with the help of dedicated leaders in our regions. Each club throughout the United States are assigned. A, a vocation director. The clubs, in turn, then assign their individual members a day of the week to pray for their assigned vocation director. The Sarah Sparks website is a website that was designed by Sarah in cooperation with the National Conference of Diocesan Vocation Directors. It's a vocations resource that features 28 turnkey vocation programs. At the recent NCBBD convention in Minneapolis, Sarah Sparks was featured in a main presentation and was referenced many times in the talks given by the experienced vocation directors.
developed out of the success of Sarah Sparks was our Sarah Sparks Vocation Ministry Workshops. These workshops are led by SARIN leaders who help parishes plan and carry out vocation activities. The Bishop of a diocese will invite us to come into their diocese to conduct the one day workshop. These, these events bring together faithful Catholics for the purpose of starting a parish vocation ministry. Attendees leave with a strategic plan and an action plan and a Sarah mentor that stays with them and in contact with them for one year. Now, most of these scheduled workshops had to be canceled during the COVID pandemic. Dr. Ann Rode, our Vice President of Vocation, manages the schedule, and she is happy to announce that as restrictions are being relaxed, dioceses are starting to line up and are setting their dates to get on with the work of vocations. I'm also very proud to announce that each of our executive committees have also stepped up and conducted bi-monthly or quarterly meetings for all our SARINs across the country. These meetings were headed up by Dr. Ann Rote, our Vice President of Vocations, Jesse Gallegos, Vice President of Communications, Betty Laura, Vice President of Programs, and Candace Tyrell, Vice President of Membership. During the pandemic, these meetings have kept SARINs across our country connected and focused on our mission. Another blessing of the pandemic has been the giant leaps forward of our leadership development. Since our regions could no longer meet for their annual leadership trainings, Mike Downey, our president-elect and leadership chair, expanded the district governor training programs to include training for each of the club officer positions. Mike also used this opportunity to start a president's roundtable that invite all of our club presidents to meet online to share their triumphs and their challenges. And about our membership, in spite of not meeting, we have had many clubs that have actually gained members during this time. This is a tribute to our clubs, to the Saren Apostolate, and last but not least, to the leadership of the Sarah International Board for providing a platform and an incentive to add new members. And about our future, time and time again, we are told by our bishops, our priests, our cardinals, and yes, our Pope, that what we do as Sarans is critically important, critically important. And what we do as Sarans is greatly appreciated by our religious. The US Saran community will come back with renewed vigor, like our bishops and our priests who have discovered new ways to minister to their flock, new ways to evangelize the good news of Jesus Christ. Sarans will be emerging more, enlight more enlightened and stronger in faith than ever in our mission. In this pandemic era, it is so wonderful to be a Saran. Thank you for all you do and God bless. Good morning. My name is Emmanuel Costa, past president of Serra Italy and presently a trustee of Serra International. I'm deeply sorry not to be with you in person today due to the limitations on international travel to the US. In this short presentation, I'd like to bring you the greetings of all the Italian Serrans united with you in spirit and in the effort to bring certain activities back to full speed after two very difficult years in which COVID has left a heavy mark on our lives. Let me now share my screen. I will try to briefly draw your attention to some meaningful experiences and activities of the Italian Serra in the last two years. First of all, these difficult times have been a very good learning experience. In fact, we have realized the need of renewing ourselves, the need of thinking about new strategies on how to achieve our goals, attract new and younger members, organize ourselves in a more efficient way. Also, 
we have learned to use a virtual means of communication. This is a real added opportunity for the future. Think about more frequent organizational meetings, more training, etc. As far as the activities are concerned, I'd like to introduce the Serra National School Contest and the Photo Contest. Finally, I will talk about the opening of a new club. The National School Contest. We have held one every year since 2004 with a broad participation, over 50% of clubs, 200 schools, some 4,000 students. The contest aims to encourage young people to reflect on the important values of man and society, promoting at the same time a culture of life understood as a vocation to serve. The work can be an essay, a short story, a drawing, an artistic work, a song, a poem, or a short video. Last year's theme was Faith is as, as, I repeat, as if we could see the invisible. The theme for this coming year is taking care of ourselves and others to make a better world. This is the image of the winning drawing for the past year contest. You can see how the student represented the power of the invisible grasping the arm of a man swallowed by a stormy sea. The photo contest looking without filters is aimed at promoting a culture of encounter opposed to any form of isolation. The theme of the first edition was the other beyond fear. Sadness is the, is the look turned towards oneself. Here are the two of the winning photos. I have uh, no comments. I think they are beautiful and very meaningful. On July 31st, a charter was delivered to a new club, Oppido, Mar Oppido Mamertina Palmi, in the southern part of Italy. The first new club in the last seven years. There were a few keys to this, to this successful opening. Over one year of training, supported by a national team and the district governor, the proximity and support of the Reggio Calabria Club, the will and the determination of the local bishop. I will now show you three photos of the opening ceremony. The first photo shows the old group of Serran. The second shows the delivery of the charter to the new president, Antonietta Bonarigo. To be noticed here, the presence of Cesare Gambardella, past Serra International President, and the presence of Paola Poli, president of the Italian Council. The third photo shows a bishop of Oppido, His Excellency Monsignor Francisco Bilito. Paola Poli on the left and Antonietta Bonarigo on the right. They are happy and smiling. I believe that their smiles are an encouragement for all of us to look into the future with renewed optimism. I thank you for your attention and I wish you a successful convention under the protection of the Virgin Mary and Saint Junipero Serra. Very sorry, really, not to be with you, but uh, always forward, never back. Thank you.
Brazil is a country with 220 million people made up of natives, Africans and Europeans in a great diversity with many social contrasts but without any doubt a joyful and welcoming land. 60% of the population is Catholic. The Sierra Club was founded in Brazil 57 years ago. Today, there are 90 clubs and more than 10,000 members praying for vacations as missionaries of San Junipero Sierra. We have annually the National Convention and the pilgrimage to the Sanctuary of Our Lady Aparecida where around 800 people are always present. Recently, there is a great commitment inviting and encouraging children and young people to know the vocational work and the Sarah Club. There are nowadays three children clubs in formation. The Brazilian Sarah always tried to take part in all the international conventions. We were present in the last one in Mexico. President Ruben Gallegos knows very well the Brazilian Sarah. He is a great Brazilian friend, as well as a devout of Our Lady Aparecida. Despite the pandemic, we are always strongly united throughout frequent virtual meetings and training courses. In this way, there was a greater approach between members from different locations. During this period, the National Council have done an important work throughout the distribution of thousands of brochures and prayers books in the Catholic communities around the country. Despite the prayer and vocational work, the Brazilian Sierra has a priority being side by side with priests, religious and seminars, supporting and encouraging them. We have always an ideal, the love for vacations. Dear Sarans from around the world, hello, I'm Tony Mangione, President, Sarah Council for Canada, and greetings from the 17 clubs of Canada, from the shores of the Atlantic to the Pacific Oceans. We're sorry that we can't be with you in person. Regrettably, COVID-19 continues to put us in caution mode, and travel restrictions are still with us. Our 426 members continue to pray for and affirm vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. To grow in our faith, 1 John encourages us to go deeper in Christ. And for all of us, this pandemic has given us the opportunity to do just that. All clubs have made the best of a difficult situation by meeting virtually. Who says you can't teach an old dog a new trick? Virtual meetings continue and include mass, a guest speaker, and fellowship. We managed to bring our favorite beverage to the fellowship. Other highlights include working with bishops of seven dioceses and their vocations directors, praying vocation rosary, Eucharistic adoration, intercessory prayers for our members and their families, the Ordinandi dinner, Two clubs, Toronto Downtown and Markham Scarborough, have created a newsletter. The COVID mask with Sarah logo gets a Sarah name out there. Praying for each seminarian by name. Traveling vocation chalice. Sarah mass cards. Two of three masses for 2021 have already been televised. Priestly ordination anniversary cards. Stations of the cross during Lent. 
the Sarah Club of Halton had a modified altar service award event with the pastor's approval of each parish who nominated a server. Certificates and medals were delivered to the home parish for presentation to the server. In regards to the missionaries of St. Unipero Serra, to date, approximately 500 individuals have accepted from our members a Serra prayer card for vocations. Follow-up continues. And finally, continued planning for the 2022 SI Convention in Toronto. Please stay tuned for the following promo on the Sarah International Convention in Toronto in 2022. Toronto is also known as the Six. Why you ask? Come to the convention and find out. Peace and all good. God bless.